Hey guys, welcome back to a new video and in this video we will finally take a look to Ignacio. I think that's his name. Uh, the newest Genesis unit. Also, thanks to Revenant once again for lending me his account so I can showcase him. And for Ignacio, um, all of his gates are maxed except for the third one. But in JP, wait, you can't collect screen, blue sticks and so on. Um, anyway, uh... As you can see, we don't have all gates maxed. The third gate is the only one that we haven't maxed. But in the future, he gets his seventh gate as well. In JP, for example, he already has a seventh gate. And for the seventh gate, for the other gates, we will also take a look to the database. So don't worry about that. We will take a look to all of his future upgrades as well. Okay, that's it. Time to start with the showcase. And uh, for his attack scaling, <clears throat> his attack scaling is based on P attack and DEX. But here it displays it as it, it as it would only scale on DAX, which isn't really that right, but uh, whatever. Okay, now we take a look to the runes. For his runes, uh, we are using the charge for set for P-Tech plus 10% and the flash set for single target tech power plus 5. And in the first rune slot, we are using a DAX rune, of course. And you could also think about using a P-Tech rune, but most people with DAX rune already have missile tech power on it as, as substat. As you can see, we also have uh, Mr. Tech Power Plus 6. Sadly, not plus 15, but it's still good enough for the showcase, I, I guess. Um, yeah, P Tech or Dex. Um, even if you have a P Tech rune with Mr. Tech Power Plus 15, I still recommend to use a Dex. Wait, why should you even have a, a, a P Tech rune with Mr. Tech Power? Okay, I mean, there's Nemo. <coughs> whatever. <coughs> uh, what, what I'm trying to say is. Um, his base dex stat is already higher than his p-tech stat, so he would scale better with dex. I mean, he does scale better with dex. Then in the second uh, rune that we are using a dex rune, obviously, as sub stat, you could think about using something like healing, true or something like that. Then in the third, uh, then in the third rune slot, uh, we are using a crit rune beca because uh, he has skills to crit with, so. Having more crit is recommended. Then for the fourth rune slot, uh, we have luck, but I recommend magic death. Then we have, <clears throat> then we have HP and agility. Uh, blue stacks, please be faster, please. Yeah, agility. God, is that laggy? Okay, uh, now let's take a look to his gear setup. In the first gear slot, we are using his main gear, which you can get, uh, which, or let's say, which you can obtain by. Uh, clearing his box event. Uh, that one's called Firearm Zevi Java, I think that's that's its name. Uh, it gives Intro Tools plus 15, P Attack plus 40, Dex plus 50, and Modify Strong with Sprite plus 30. And that one also has a Ghibli, Anti Curse, uh, by Chi N, uh, 5 with Dark Missile Attack and Chance of Crit, and inflicts a Chemic Overload. And uh, raises Strong with Sprite by 150 for 5 turns before activation. Range 5, high range unlimited. And in case you don't know what a chemic overload means, um, here's the explanation. And in the second gear slot, we're using the VCR from his own memento, messengers, Code and that one gives HP plus 650, Choose of 10 plus 15, Missile Attack Power plus 10, and Magic Rest plus 15. That one also has a Ghibli Traces of Eternity, which permanently raises uh, Missile Attack Power by 3 on start of own turn and reduces True Spend Rate by 4%. And it's stack up to 10 times. So you are basically permanently able to raise your Missile Attack Power by 30 and to reduce your True Spend Rate by 40%. And especially the true spend rate, oh god, that, that matters a lot. And in case you don't have that one, uh, just use something else on him that gives uh, uh, HP like um, Moonstar Armor, HP plus 131, uh, or something else that gives HP. Then in the third gear slot, uh, we are using a Legion God on Necklace, a normal 4 star gear. And that one gives Dex plus 50, Agility plus 10 and Crit Rate plus 20. And then also has a Ghibli Divine War Soul, which raises Slash Res and Strike Res by 30 for returns after ping on map. 
Uh, the durability is nice, but the most important thing is the agility thing. So you, so you have more, so you have an agility gear and the extra crit rate of 20. So that gear is also pretty important. Most people should already have that. And in case you don't have that one, uh, just use something else on him that gives agility. And now for his mementos. Uh, in the first slot, because he only has a first memento, uh, because he only has one memento slot, we're using his own memento. Something to save, something to keep. And that one gives Dex plus 3 days base set. By the way, just like for any other Genesis Memento, that one is limited. And that one gives P-Tech plus 80, Dacius plus 64, HP plus 640, Dex plus 96, Missile Attack Power plus 16, and if you have that Memento at max loop rate, then you get range plus 1. And that Memento also has a Vision Ability, Void of Solvation, uh, which raises P-Tech and Dex by 150% for one turn after moving. Move Area Diamond 7, High Range Unlimited. And if you have that moment at max snip break, then you are now able to raise your P-Tech and Dex by 300%. You're basically able to triple your P-Tech and Dex for one turn. And you also get one more charge. And that means you have three charges in total now. And now we're here at the database for uh, the same Memento, Ignatius Memento, but in the JP version it already has a Memento uh, group skill. Uh, or let's say memento leader skill. Um, that memento leader skill, I think the unit, the, the memento group is called Shinru, Shinsu group, or something like that. Anyway, uh, it raises HP by 30%, single target attack by 30, dex by 20%, hit rate by 10, and strong with sprite by 40, and strong with gluttony by 20. Uh, for the memento group, it's it's featured in two memento groups, as you can see, a pink one, I think that's for Nemo, and the other one for the other. Yeah, memento groups here, as you, as you can see, here are the memento groups. And in case you don't have that one, uh, just uh, click on the memento filter and search for uh, Northern Pride. Click on OK, and then you can see a few mementos uh, that you could use on him inside in case you don't have his own memento. Uh, for example, you could think about using um, Kedanova's normal uh, pool memento by Gun Days of Kinship, and that one gives agility. For not from bright units, so if you want more agility, you could use that one instead. Or in case you have a second memento slot in the future, just put that one in the second slot. Or Kelenova's limited memento destroyed without tears, and that one gives injury jewels and some extra decks for units from not from bright or like Kina's normal pool memento bright, bright a prayer to bright, which gives you some extra P attack. Alright, I totally forgot that there's also another uh, memento option uh, of this guy. I don't know which his name is because he doesn't exist in global yet. But that guy's memento is also so kind of interesting for Ignatio because that one gives P-Tech a space dead plus 30. And some extra P-Tech that you can see. Unit group trigger plus buff. Uh, Ignatio is featured here. That memento also obviously doesn't exist in global yet, but in case you get that one in the future, it's probably the it's definitely the best one that you could use in exchange for his own memento. Or if, if you want the second memento, uh, memento in the second memento slot, then use that one. And now let's take a look to his skills. At first, pitch black turret, uh, penetrating darkness attack on enemy and chance of grit and deals a true damage of 20 and negates targets a jewel or charge for two turns and reduces jewels obtained by 20. Range 5, high range unlimited. Then we have dark flash, sky ray, dark missile attack on targets with an area and chance of crit. Range 4, area square 3, high range 2. And then we have dark fall, battle star, missile attack on enemies with an area and detonating effect and notifies range extension. Range 2, area square 3, high range 2. And as far as I know, the detonating effect is new. I have never seen that before, but the detonating effect basically means that if your enemy, if, if an enemy is inflicted with a chemic overload, for example, uh, if you use the, the skill Dark Fall Battle Star, which has a detonating effect on it, then you are able to trigger the uh, chemic overload status uh, instantly. So you basically don't have to wait a certain amount of turns uh, till it triggers by itself. You are basically able to trigger it uh, by using that skill instantly. And nullifies range extension basically means that uh, all range buffs that were used on him will be nullified. And then we have homing shot where a molib then uh, increases CT by 40 and raises missile attack power for one turn by 40 and opening dark helix stand chains into chasing dark rhyme stand for one use. 
Um, we will come back to the opening dark. Basically, um, if we, are, if we are using that skill, this last skill will be changed to either one of the other skills. But don't worry, it's confusing, but we will come back to that in a few seconds. Uh, uh, then uh, we have final shot. We have Wolfram increases CT by 40 and raises wizard attack power by 40 for one turn and opening dark. Helix stand changed into final dark overstand for one use. So that skill is basically the same one, just the opening dark helix stand changed into chasing dark crime stand and the other one changed, changed opening dark helix stand uh, to final dark overstand. But uh, it, it's basically just about changing the last skill that you can see here into other skills for uh, one use basically. And now his last skill, opening dark helix stand, dark missile attack on enemy and chance of crit and lowest missile rest by 30 for 3 turns and opening, darks, heal, opening dark helix stand changes into chasing dark crime stand for 1 use, range 6, high range unlimited. Okay, so I decided to go to, uh, to the HME training grounds to show you how the skill swapping chain uh, Skill swap changes work. Um, let's use final shot. We are Wolfram. Uh, that one um, changes opening dark helix stand to final dark overstand. Let's use that one. Okay, so now the skill got changed to final dark overstand and uh, dark missile attack on enemy and chance of crit and inflicts a shamic overload and disables all rages to this attack. And final dark overstand changes into opening dark healing stand for one use. But uh, let's use homing shot. We are more lip than uh, for chasing dark crime stand because we haven't seen that one yet. And for chasing dark crime stand, we have dark missile attack on enemy and chance of crit and absorbs part of damage inflicted back as HP. And chasing dark crime stand changes into final dark overstand for one use. Range six, high range unlimited. So basically, um, his last skill has two other skills. Uh, two other skills featured in itself. It, it, I know it's quite confusing, but it's how it works. And now for the detonating effect, so you can also see it in this video as well. Uh, the enemy al already has a shemic overload status. Now we use that skill, and boom, it gets instantly triggered, which is super nice. Okay, and now we're here at database to take a look to the changes of his fifth gate because in JP he has his fifth gate and just like I said at the beginning of the video we will take a look to the future updates for him as well. And for the fifth gate, the fifth gate changes uh, his last skill like final dark overstand, uh, opening dark, helix stand I think and so on. So I'd say let's start with opening dark helix stand. And now for the skill description of that skill, uh, we can see dark missile attack on enemy and chance of crit and lowers missile rest by 30 for 3 turns and inflicts delay if the target is a human. And opening dark helix stand changes into chasing dark crime stand for 1 use, range 6, high range unlimited. And yeah, as, you can, as you can see, if you click on new and all if you swap, if you swap between uh, them, then you can see we have to spend 8 truths less and the attack modifier gets increased by 20%. And now for chasing dark crime stand, uh, for the skill description it says dark missile attack on enemy and chance of crit and absorbs part of damage inflicted back as HP and if the target is a monster, it absorbs 25% of enemy's agility for 3 turns before activation. And chasing dark crime stand changes into a final dark overstand for 1 use, range 6 high range unlimited. And once again, if we click on new and all, then we can see we have to spend uh, 8 truths less. Just like before, attack modifier also got increased by 20%. And if we scroll down, then we can see that we are able to absorb 25% of the enemy's uh, agility if the enemy is monster. Which can also be quite useful in some situations. And now for the skill description of Final Dark Overstand. Uh, we have a dark missile attack on enemies and chance of crit and inflicts a chemic overload and disables all reactions to this attack. And if the target is gigantic, uh, reduce the single target attack rest by 50 for 3 turns before activation. And Final Dark Overstand changes into opening dark helix stand for one use, range 6 high range unlimited. 
And now for his basics. For his basics, at first we have Spirit Gun, um, Malaika, which raises a lie and self crit rate by 40 for 3 turns. Range 4, high range unlimited. Then we have Breaker Gun deto Detonation, breaks targets shield. Uh, range 5, high range unlimited. And then his last skill, Explosion Brigade Darkness attack on enemy and low CT by 25%. And nullify CT up on target for 5 turns range, 6 high range unlimited. And now for his passives. In the first passive slot, uh, we are using Hollow Genius, uh, which raises range by 2 and raises dex by 50% and inchill choose by 25. And in the second passive slot, uh, we are using Marksman's Intuition, which raises agility by 10% and missile attack power by 10. And after max the second gate, this one turns into Will in Hand, which now raises your missile attack power by uh, 25 and it also gives you range plus one. So you basically get uh, 15 missile attack power more and you also get range plus one. Okay, so for the gates, uh, which is the most important one? Uh, right now, uh, for, global, for the global version right now, uh, his second gate is definitely the, the, your first, uh, your first, uh, your first choice because 15 missile attack power more is nice to have and you also get range plus one after that his first gate for a good amount of hp also for my p attack and dex and then his last gate for the uh, leader uh, unit leader skill uh, that one raises dark units hp by 30 percent p attack by 20 percent uh, dex by 20 percent and missile attack power power by 20 percent and all attack by 20 percent and crit rate by 10 percent Oh god, okay, that's that's actually more, that's actually better than I expected, holy shit, dude. Okay, now we're here at the database for JP once again to take a look to the gate order uh, in case you have him at level 99 in the future and you're watching this video later on. Anyway, uh, which is now the most important one? In my opinion, uh, I guess the second gate is still uh, the best choice because uh, still uh, your best first choice because 15 more missile attack power and also range plus one also super nice to have and of the second gate i recommend to go for his fifth gate for the changes uh, the changes you can see them uh, uh, at on the time step at time step that you can see right now um i'm not going to repeat all of that once again because it's written in japanese and it hurts anyway uh, after the fifth gate uh, his seventh gate to unlock the spirit gear, yes, he has 7 gate, which means he also has a spirit gear. For the spirit gear, uh, as you can see, the base stats, uh, you get some P-Tech, some extra magic attack and agility as well, uh, which is nice. And for the spirit gear, as you can see, uh, that one gives HP plus 15%, dex plus 10%, crit rate plus 15%, and P-Attack plus 5%. And for the spirit gear, that one uh, raises stronger slide plus 25 uh, for own dark attacks then after the seventh gate i'd say go for his uh, sixth gate for the huge hp boost you don't really have to max completely just leave it at four because uh, the second memento slot that you could use uh, on him the, the second memento option best option only gives something like p attack and he doesn't really need more p attack it wouldn't make such a huge difference so just leave it at 4 for the huge HP boost, you don't have to max it completely. Um, after the 6th gate, uh, I recommend to go for his 1st gate. Uh, so you also get a good amount of HP, also for more P attack and dex. After that, I recommend to go for his 4th uh, gate. Also for more, uh, also for a small amount of HP, also more P attack, dex, strong scutney plus 20, strong sprite plus 40. And his last gate would be his 3rd gate. Uh, which raises dark units HP by 30%, P attack by 20%, dex by 20%, missile attack power by 20%, all attack by 20% and crit rate by 10%. Okay, so now we hit the Ashami training grounds and we're using this setup. But I'm going to remove uh, his armor um, because his armor gives him a permanent uh, missile attack power buff which would mess up the testing by a bit, so we are not using that one. Uh, oh, Revenant! Revenant! Okay, once again we are here at the HME training grounds for the damage tests. And like always, I'm not going to use them with any buffs or debuffs. We will do that later. Let's go. 
Okay, so for the damage test, uh, I'm not going to test the screw damage for all of the screws because it, otherwise it would take way too long. Uh, I'm only, I'm just going to to you to test the screw damage for his last skill and for his gear ability. Anyway, that's it. Uh, normal hit we make uh, 5,688 without crit. Then the pitch black turret we make uh, 9,894 without crit. Uh, then Dark Flash Sky Ray, 9058 without crit. Then with Dark Fall Battle Star, we make um, 10362, okay. Then Explosion Back Gatry, uh, we make 9572. Then Anti Curse Bison, uh, 11825. And then for his last skill opening, Dark Hill Extend, uh, 12797 without crit. And with crit, we make. Uh, 17,000. Uh, uh, okay. Okay, so now I used him with his missile attack power buff and his uh, P attack and dex charger. Uh, at first, normal hit. Uh, with normal hit, we make 18,156 without crit. Then, uh, pitch black turret without crit, we make uh, 30,927. Okay. That's a lot. Uh, Dark Flash Sky Ray without crit, um, 28,416. Then Dark Fall Battle Star, 33,021. Then Explosion Becker Tree, uh, 29,927. And then um, Anti Curse Bison, we make uh, 36,930 without crit and with crit, we make. Uh, something about 46,000, I guess, something like that. And now opening Dark Helix stand. Uh, we make 39,938 without good and drift crit we make. Wait, what? Did we even crit? Okay, guys, but what's my opinion about him? In my opinion, he's a great unit. His damage was a bit over the average, nothing too impressive. But also not terrible. Um, is he worth to get? I mean, for content wise, he, he might be good in arena, he might be good in PvP, he might be good in uh, PvE, but he's not a raid unit, and he's a Genesis unit, and he also needs his Memento, or let's say his VCR is the important thing because of the missile and show spend rate, snowball. Uh, but his memento itself is also good because at maximum break it gets it gives you it gives him range plus one and so on. And just like I said, he's a Genesis unit. His memento is limited. Genesis units have the worst uh, rates uh, if you want to pull for them. So it's going to be super expensive. Uh, Content-wise, absolutely not needed. And uh, there, it's, it's it's a Genesis unit, you know. It's too expensive. He. I mean, if, if he has a better chart kit, higher damage, or something like that, then he might be worth to get, but absolutely not worth it, in my opinion. I mean, uh, we already have tons of other strong Dark Missile units like uh, Eliza, Ryuri, Irene, um, Grim 1, he's, he, he's probably on the same level as Grim 1, the global unit, for example, probably. Uh, then we also have fail note. Fail note is so much better. Oh god. I mean, there are still also some other free-to-play friendly um, Dark Missile units like Albea or something like that. So Ignatio, current wise, just like I said, he's absolutely not needed. If you are looking for a strong Dark Missile unit, then either think about getting Ryuri, Fail Not or Eliza. Those are the best Dark Missile units in this game right now. But okay guys, uh, I think that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and I see you in the next one.